What's up guys? It's Kelly and today I've got a review for you. It's so weird to not say swatch or review. But make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos and let's get started. I will say it's very rare for me to do a review that is not a swatch and review but I recently saw a product and I really wanted to try it out and I wanted to do a video of me trying it and let you know what I think of it and if it's a gimmick or not. So the product in question is the Maniology Shrinking Stamper. So if you guys don't know anything about stamping. I've done a few videos on it. I'll put a link up in the cards so you guys can kind of familiarize yourself with what stamping is. But basically you've got these metal plates that are etched in and you can use a rubber stamper to transfer the design onto your nails. And one thing that those of you who like me have small nails may realize is that a lot of times there are images that are just too big for our small nails. And Maniology recently came out with a product that is a shrinking stamper. So basically you can use it to actually shrink the designs and still stamp them onto your nails. And this was very intriguing to me because like I said, I do have short nails, so I really wanted to try this. So I went ahead and I just filmed myself trying it for the first time and doing my whole troubleshooting and I'm going to show it to you. But first I just want to go over the basic steps of what the website says on how you are supposed to do it. So first things first, I did actually get a different stamper that I guess is not available anymore. So I just got this little singular stamper but right now on the Maniology website you can only get it as a two-in-one so you get the shrinking stamper and you get a regular clear stamper so it's still the same product though it's still the same stamper thingy in here. Step one is you take it out of the little holder and you just stick it onto a nail polish bottle. <laughs> this is going to be our base for how we're going to actually shrink our stamper or our stamp I guess. It's not we're not shrinking the stamper we're shrinking the stamp E which is the stamp. Step two is to take your regular clear stamper which is also included in the shrinking stamper on the one on the website but I do have a separate one and you're going to pick up your design and then here's where it gets a little bit funky because step three you're actually supposed to take your finger and just like pull the stamp down or the stamper. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna confuse those two words this entire video. I'm sorry in advance. But yeah, you just kind of pull the stamper down and you kind of stretch it out and then you stamp on with the clear stamper and then you release the yellow stamper. And in theory, it should actually shrink your design. So yeah, that looked easy enough. I thought we could try it. So let me just show you guys the footage of all of my attempts. Yes, there were multiple. That is a little hint as to what's to come in this video. But yeah, so roll footage. So I thought for this experiment I would use my Moyu London collaboration plate because there are some really beautiful designs on here that are just too big for my nails. Honestly, I like the way that they look as sort of partial designs, but I would love to see these as full designs on my nails. So I thought I would start off with this little sun design who I absolutely love. I'm going to show you guys really quickly what it looks like on my nail without any shrinking just so you can see as kind of the control for this experiment. So this is what the full design looks like. Let's try to shrink that down so we can get that whole beautiful sun on my nails. So as I mentioned this is the little stamper that I'm going to be using so I'm just going to pop it right out and I'm going to stick it onto a nail polish bottle. So I'm just going to show you guys me actually stamping it onto the yellow. Obviously I have to stamp it onto the clear stamper first, but I do have to work pretty fast so that the stamp doesn't dry. As you can see, first attempt, not great. So I thought I would just go in and try again. This time being more careful about how I'm pulling down that yellow stamper and I think that one actually turned out really good. So then I went and stamped that onto my nail and I quickly realized two issues. One, I couldn't see where the stamp was going and two, it dried way too quickly. So for attempt number three, I went in with their sticky base coat, which you can use over your manicure and that will help the stamp actually adhere to the nail, even if it is a little bit on the dry side. So again, just popping that onto the yellow stamper, trying a little bit hard to line that up nicely and stamping that on. And of course, since I couldn't see it, I did not stamp it on very nicely. So at this point I was like, let me try to experiment a little bit and try to put this back onto the clear stamper. So I tried stamping on, nothing happened. And then I thought, well, why don't I take that sticky base coat and put it on my clear stamper? But the sticky base coat doesn't actually do anything on the stamper. It was kind of just like piling up. So then I thought, let me put that sticky base coat on the yellow stamper and then peel it up like it's a decal. But I'm kind of an idiot because I didn't realize until the editing of this video that the reason that didn't work is because why would I use the sticky base coat for that? I should have used top coat for it. But I did not. I still think that would 
work and that would be a useful way of doing it, but I decided to just go ahead and keep on trying and just be a little bit more careful about application. So that one, very smushed. There were a lot of attempts here. So attempt number six, I didn't think that was awful. I thought I could kind of just throw that on there. So went ahead and decided to stamp that on this time, stamping from the bottom and just kind of rolling it onto my nail, but then I was too far down my nail. But I think we're getting closer. Here's attempt number seven. That one dried a little bit too quickly. So again, it's it sort of gets easier the more you do it, but you also have to work so quickly every single time and also be very consistent with how you're stamping it on every single time. So attempt number eight, not too bad. I thought I would try this one on. It wasn't terrible. It definitely wasn't my best work, but at this point I was like, I need a quick little break. So I took a breather. I stepped away from the nail polish for a few minutes, few hours, and then I thought I would try again anew. So coming in fresh with attempt number eight, and I thought I started off with this stamp looking pretty decent, a little bit smushed, but not terrible. But then once I stamped it on my nail, it somehow looked way more smushed. So attempt number 10, here we come. This time I just didn't work fast enough. Again, you really just have to work quickly here and you also have to make sure that you're not in a cold environment because that is gonna make the nail polish dry faster. So after 10 somewhat unsuccessful attempts, I went in with attempt number 11 and this one, spoiler alert, I would say was my best attempt out of the whole bunch. It was still a little bit squished, but I think I was starting to really get the hang of it. And I was actually able to stamp the design onto basically the center of my nail. Now I did notice that there were some parts that I didn't clean up with tape before I stamped that onto my nail, but that's fine because after many, 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 many attempts, I finally had something that kind of looked good. So here's a little comparison. You can see just how much smaller it got with that shrinking stamper. And I was actually really impressed with that. Only took me 11 tries. So I thought I would actually have an easier time working with a full nail image. So I ended up going with this cool little fractal kind of design that looks like a bunch of circles overlapping to create a really cool pattern. And I decided to go in with a metallic silver stamping polish. You don't always have to use stamping polish, but for the purposes of this experiment, I wanted to make it as easy as possible. So this is the design I'm going in with. I'm gonna show you guys once again, really quickly what it looks like on my nails as normal. And this is actually a design that I love on my nails as normal because it kind of just looks like a really cool geometric flower. So totally love this design, but let's see how it looks a little bit smaller. So as I predicted, since this one wasn't a specific design with a face on it, it was significantly easier. I only needed the one attempt in order to succeed with having this on my nail. Again, as with all of my successful attempts, I did use that sticky base coat to make sure that it stuck onto my nail. But the one thing that I noticed since I was using a metallic polish is that it actually kind of wrinkled that nail polish. So you can kind of see, I ended up applying some top coat just to see if that would help smooth it out, but it didn't at all. So I did notice that I, I actually tried off camera a couple of other metallic polishes after this, and I found that it did the same thing. So as you can see, a very big difference in terms of how that silver polish looks, but overall it was very easy to apply with a full nail design. Okay, so now that you have seen my experience with the stamper, let me go over some of the things that I really recommend you should know before you buy this stamper and also just my thoughts in general on it, whether I think it's worth it or if I think it's useful. So yeah. Let's talk about that. So tip number one is to definitely use sticky base. I found that made a huge difference because otherwise the stamp would just dry on the yellow stamper way too quickly and I wasn't able to transfer it onto my nails. I did use the Maniology sticky base, but you can also use the Orly Bonder base coat, which is, as you guys probably know, one of my favorite base coats. So that also works perfectly for it. Tip number two is obviously you need to work super fast. I think for me, I was at sort of a disadvantage because I was filming it. So I wanted to like get every everything in focus before I actually did any stamping and that slowed me down and that made it a lot harder to work. So definitely work fast. I think that's an important step. I did have a lot of trouble with some of the quick drying stamp polishes, but I don't think it would have been an issue if I wasn't filming it and just trying to work super, super fast. And then tip number three is I think creams personally work a lot better. As you guys could see, the metallic polishes tend to kind of shrivel up and they get like a little ring looking, whereas the creams I thought really performed well and they looked totally normal on the nail even when they were the shrunken down version. Stick to creams, I would use metallics sparingly for this, even though I tend to go for metallics a lot 
not. When it comes to stamping, I do think that the creams just looked better in this instance. But yeah, overall, I do think it's definitely worth it. There's clearly a learning curve and I think it's gonna take me some time to get used to. I didn't realize that there were so many stamps that I just, I, I like don't even think about them as being too big for my nail. I'm just like, oh, which part should I put on my nail? So it's really cool to have an option to put the whole design on my nail. I think the trickiest thing for me and the thing that's gonna take the most getting used to is the fact that it's not a clear stamper. So you can't see exactly where you are placing the stamp. I did find that it was easier to kind of roll it down onto my nail rather than just dropping it right down because I was able to see where the design was going. But I will say I am very much spoiled by clear stampers now. When I first started stamping, we used to just have these fully opaque stampers and you couldn't see where you were stamping. And I used to be good at it, I think, but now I'm so used to the clear stamper that it was definitely difficult. But I can understand that they probably need to be able to differentiate the two different types of stamping bases. Actually, that makes me wonder if you can use the clear one for it, but I don't want to break my clear one. So I'm not going to attempt that right now. <laughs> but maybe if I buy a backup one, I will attempt it and then we will see what happens. So like I said, the one that I used is not available on the Maniology website anymore. However, there is what is probably a better deal anyway, which is the two-in-one stamper set and also comes with a scraper. And that retails for $12 USD. So I will link it down below as well as all of the other products that I used. I do have a discount code with Maniology. You can use the code Kelly to get 10% off your order there. So I'll put that down in the description as well so you guys can check that out but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Have you tried the shrinking stamper? Are you interested in it? Are you planning on picking it up? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments. We can chat about it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was helpful and if there's any other stamping products and polishes reviews that you want to see also let me know in the comments. I am planning on doing a video very soon of doing stamping with non-stamping polishes so you can see my recommendation for polishes that you can use that aren't necessarily just for stamping. If you're not already subscribed to my channel Channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Big shout out to my cosmic admirals on Patreon, Amanda M and Braxton Scott, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Jean, and Jean wants to know, have you had any paranormal experiences? So if any of you guys have been watching my fun facts, you probably know that I have experienced a couple of strange things. I'll give you guys a short overview, but I will say it actually doesn't happen anymore since 2020 happened, and I think I'll I have an explanation for it, so I'm going to explain why as well. So back in my old apartment, I started experiencing a weird phenomenon where I would always wake up in the night and be convinced that there was a man in a top hat looking down at me and I would always freak out and turn on the light and then nobody would be there. And that happened for quite a while, actually. And then in this apartment, I used to have this situation where I would always see a clock under the bed and it was always the right time and that always freaked me out because there was no clock under the bed. And I also actually, when I used to have this nail polish tower in my bedroom where I slept, now it's in the guest room, I also would always think that it fell over in the night and then I would run over to it like with the lights out and try to like pick it up but there would be nothing there and the tower would just be still standing fine. So I feel like it's it was really a combination of just like me sleepwalking, talking, being in between sleep and awakeness. But like I said, it has actually stopped. And I think the reason for that is because I stopped taking a specific medication that I usually only take when I'm eating foods that give me some digestive issues, like when I'm out to eat. But since I've been home all the time, I've just been cooking for myself. So I haven't had a need to actually take that medication. And all of a sudden my weird paranormal dreamy experiences have stopped. So I think we can pinpoint that all of that happened because of that medication. Probably going to start taking it at some point again this year, so we'll probably have some more weird experiences. But as far as anything else paranormal, I've literally never had anything else happen to me. Uh, it's usually just something that happens when I'm like half asleep, half awake, and it's like that kind of thing. But again, that, that really hasn't happened. I still definitely talk a lot in my sleep though. But yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!